Morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to the Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up a sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are your go-to source. We are your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program like the one put together by Doc Wallach, we can help you do that as well. If you have questions about formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, or if you have questions about our truth treatment products or comments or success stories, 844 Two, three, six, sixty, ten is our number on the bright side, and we welcome your phone calls. We'll get, them, we'll get your phone calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do. Eight four four two three six sixty ten. If you would like to join the Brightside Ben team, you can head to our websites: brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. For a one-time twenty-five dollar fee, you can start yourself a longevity business. Earn thank you checks associated with having your own business. Help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can also get your products at the wholesale price if you so desire. Offer a one-time $25 fee. Click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also purchase longevity products off the websites, pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Com. Also, want to remind you to check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com or truth retinol 5% gel. If you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, melasma, dark spots on your skin, there is no better skin lightener. There's no more gentle and non toxic skin lightener. Well, I should say, there's more, no more gentle and non toxic effective skin lightener than retinol. Retinol does have a certain degree of aggressiveness associated with it. You got to be careful with your retinol, but man, is it powerful when it comes to anti-aging, when it comes to lightening the skin, when it comes to improving the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. No anti-aging skin health program is complete, in my opinion, unless it features retinol and vitamin C. You can get retinol 5% gel and our Truth Retinol 5% gel and premium fat-soluble stabilized lipophilic moisturizing, skin softening, anti-aging, vitamin C, and all are truth treatment products. Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we have been talking on the bright side about hormesis, the idea that Small amounts of stress can actually be beneficial to the body, counterintuitive as it may be, as it may sound. Stress is actually our friend if it's done correctly. U stress, EU stress, as opposed to distress, understanding the distinction between good stress and, and chaotic stress, bad stress, is a very important uh, concept if we're going to be able to leverage the power, the health benefits of stress. Small amounts of stress have building benefits. And this is especially important when it comes to the skin. When it comes to keeping the skin healthy and youthful and smooth and wrinkle-free, you absolutely positively have to exercise your skin. Skin has to be stimulated as any organ has to be stimulated. 
And it's the stimulation that accounts for the benefits of many skin care procedures, skin health procedures. Lots of men don't typically know about this, but a lot of women know about skin peels and exfoliation treatments and lasers and microderm abrasion. All of these take advantage of the idea, leverage the idea that stress can be good for your skin if it's managed, if it's done correctly. Skin peels, so-called skin peels, I don't really like that term, skin peels. It sounds, sounds a little bit tor like uh, Roman torture or something. I prefer to say skin exfoliation or rapid or deep exfoliation treatments. These exfoliation treatments leverage the power, the healing properties, the building powers of inflammation. And inflammation is also an interesting and counterintuitive idea. Like hormesis is a counterintuitive idea, the idea that stress is kind of good for you. Inflammation being good for you is also kind of counterintuitive. We have a culture where we're always talking about the problems with inflammation and we're taking anti-inflammatory drugs. They're the best-selling, by far, the best-selling drugs of all kind, prescription and over-the-counter. Steroid drugs are anti-inflammatory. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are a huge part of the pharmacopoeia of, uh, of drugs that are sold in the pharmacy. Motrin and Tylenol and aspirin and ibuprofen, uh, naproxen. And, there's just all kinds of these anti-inflammatory drugs, and you would think that inflammation is just this mortal enemy. And in a way it is. In a way it is. But like with stress, inflammation can actually be a good guy. In inflammation, we may think of it as being a bad guy. It's linked to disease. It's linked to pain, discomfort, obviously. And the drugs that we're, many of us are taking are anti-inflammatory drugs. And it's true. Yes, it's true that there is a lot of health misery associated with inflammation. But it's also true that in the long run, inflammation might not be something that's so such a bad thing. Inflammation in the immediate sense, immediate inflammation is going to turn off building. It's going to turn off breakdown. But if inflammation is done correctly in bursts, you know, the body doesn't like sustained inflammation. It wants bursts of inflammation and then lots of rest because during that rest, we can actually build. The post-inflammatory period can be a building period. Now, it's true. Diseases are, are inflammatory. All diseases are inflammatory, and inflammatory tends to cause breakdowns, especially chronically, especially uh, when there are low levels of inflammation over the long run. But quick bursts of inflammation, if we know what we're doing, we can leverage them to turn on growth, to turn on the growth process. Inflammation is always going to be some kind of a response. This is how you want to think of inflammation. It's a response. It's a defensive response. It's a protective response. For inflammation to occur, there has to be some kind of excite, excitatory stimulus. Something has to excite the skin. Something has to stimulate the skin. Lots of things can do it. Dead cells can do it. Dead, dead, when cells die, they can release chemicals that will cause inflammation. And this is a major cause of inflammation, actually, is dying cells, dead and dying cells. This is where disease really gets going because once you have inflammation, that causes more uh, long-term inflammation. That causes more cell death and more inflammation, more cell death. And this is a really big problem. Mechanical damage can also kill cells. Wounding can kill cells. Burns can kill cells. Exercise can also kill cells, by the way. Cells die when they're starving. They're suffocated. They're toxic. All of these uh, incidences of cell death can lead to a protective inflammatory response. And that means blood clots. That means uh, 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 fluid secretions. That means redness. That means blood supply. It, there's, it's kind of a, it's a, actually in, the inflammatory process is a four-step process. The first thing that happens is you get a wound, whether it's burn or cut or scrape. Once it's been, once the wounding process has been set off, or once the inflammatory process has been set up, the, the first thing that's going to happen is blood is going to rush to the area. This blood pouring to the area is going to cause the vessels to expand. Forces the, uh, more blood will force the blessel, vessels to expand. And when the uh, vessels expand, fluids will start to leak. This is where the leakage comes from. And then white blood cells will, will, will leak out as well. It's almost like the portals in the, blood, in the blood vessels are opening up so fluid and white blood cells can escape and can, can uh, go to the wounded area. The fluid acts to protect the wounded area and the white blood cells clean things up. They're, they're a cleanup crew. It's really quite amazing when you think about all these, all the steps that are involved in this, the simplest little paper cut, the simplest little scrape, all of the different inflammatory and healing steps that are required. It's really quite amazing. All right, I'm Pharmacist Benny. 442-366-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are 
are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. We do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010 if you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or the longevity products or our truth treatment products or a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side or even better, if you'd like to join the bright side Ben team and help me in my mission to educate and spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can help change the world at the most foundational level there is, which is the level of good health, and make money while you're doing it. If you're an entrepreneur, you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, you need to check out the Longevity Business Opportunity at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you'd like to check out our Truth Treatment products, they're all up at truthtreatments.com. Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Transdermal Sea Balm, and our Truth Transdermal Sea Serum. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, silicon oil. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Treatment products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking about the inflammatory process, inflammation, wound healing. All of these, uh, all of these can be leveraged for good health. All of these can be leveraged to make us stronger. Inflammation can be leveraged for uh, for uh, building the body. Wound healing can be part of bodybuilding. It can, in fact, that's what weightlifting really is, is a kind of uh, wounding. And then the response, the muscle building, is a kind of example of wound healing. The most iconic example of the inflammatory stimulus, inflammation being a response to a stimulus, the most uh, classic example of an inflammatory stimulus is a wounding, is a wound. Whether it's a burn or it's a cut or it's a scrape, the first thing that happens after you have a wound is blood rushes to the area. This causes the blood vessels to open and the white blood cells and the fluids start to leak out. The white blood cells are like a defensive army. They, the, the white blood cells somehow know to migrate to the area of the wound. It's pretty amazing when you think about it, all the stuff that happens here intelligently. The white blood cells leak through the blood vessels. They know exactly where the wound is. They migrate to the wound. If you're curious about how that happens, it happens with chemistry, all chemical languages. The wound to tissue releases chemicals. We, call, we talked about this last week, how wound to tissue releases something called cytokines. And these chemicals that are released from wounded cells or dying cells attract the white blood cells. It's kind of like how ants are attracted by pheromones, by little chemicals. It's how ants communicate to each other. They'll drop, uh, they'll drop little chemicals, and other ants will read the chemicals or smell the chemicals or taste the chemicals. Well, that's how, uh, that's how cells in the body communicate. Ants, there's a lot of similarities between ant communication and cell communication, and there's a lot of similarities between ants and cells, especially in the amount of work that they do and how intelligent they are. The fact that an ant is so intelligent is pretty amazing, how it knows to interpret things and how it knows to go places and how it knows how to deal with various invaders and circumstances in its little ant experience. Well, a cell is the same way. A cell has that kind of intelligence packed into a tiny little space, even tinier than an ant, and much of this intelligence is accompl accomplished by reading the environment through chemicals. So cells drop off chemicals. The white blood cells are attracted to the chemicals. And uh, you get these white blood cells cleaning out the area. And between all the blood and the vasodilation and the fluid leakage and the white blood cells, you have your signs of inflammation. The redness, the heat, the swelling, the pain. These are all a result of this initial streaming of blood and leakage of fluids and white blood cells. And uh, that's all the inflammatory response. That's the, that's the first part of wound healing. Actually, the first part of wound healing is a clotting of the blood. That happens instantly for most of us. If you have hemophilia, it doesn't happen. But the blood should start to clot pretty close to instantly once you have a cut for most people. And that's why, unless you have a really, really big wound, or if you have just a simple little cut, eventually that's going to stop bleeding. And uh, that's because the first step of the wound healing process is blood clotting. The second step is this whole inflammatory process. And then once this whole, once the white blood cells have... Uh, cleared up the damaged tissue and the invading agent has been eliminated, that's when true healing begins. That third stage, that third stage is when your tissue is now starting to get remodeled, is what they call it in biochemistry, remodeled. It's starting to get rebuilt. Important point here is without the inflammation, the remodeling doesn't happen. 
the rebuilding and the remodeling are a function of the inflammation. And this is the problem with chronic use of prednisone and pro- chronic use of anti-inflammatory drugs. They slow down healing. They're anti-inflammatory, but they slow down healing. And they slow down building. In the long run, they're going to prevent healing from occurring. Now, on the other hand, because inflammation leads to healing, by understanding how to work with inflammation, how to use inflammation, by intentionally inducing inflammation strategically and intelligently, with, using the Goldilocks principle, which means not too much or not too little, just right in between. You don't want to over-inflame or under-inflame. You want it right at the sweet spot. By knowing how to do this, we can maximize healing and repair. We can keep the skin or the body skin for what we're talking about here today, constantly in this healing and repair mode. And this is a good thing. We can have the healing and repair systems all, if we're just just at that sweet spot, you don't want to be too much or too little. You don't want too much healing and too much repair. That's called fibrosis and scarring and keloids. You don't want that either. See, just just at the right sweet spot, if we can inflame the skin with just the right amount of inflammation, inflammatory stimulus, stimuli, we can maximize and keep a steady state of healing and repair going. And even better, because when the body heals and repairs, it oftentimes will make the damaged area stronger than it was before the injury took place. We can actually be better off for it. Not only can can inflammation uh, keep a steady stream of healing and, and repair going, but it can keep the skin getting better and stronger. So after the inflammatory process, you come to the stage where healing begins, and the first thing that happens when you're healing is you start to build new tissue. However, this is really important if we're going to be able to leverage inflammation. If you don't have sufficient nutrition in the blood, you can't maximize the healing. You have to have enough nutrients in the blood to accomplish the healing. This stage of healing begins with the formation of new tissue, and it's dependent on nutrition from the bloodstream. If you don't have enough vitamin C, and you don't have enough vitamin E, and you don't have enough essential fats, and you don't have enough protein in your bloodstream from your, because of a poor diet, because you're not supplementing, you're not going to be able to maximize the healing response. This is why after you come from home from the gym, that's why you want that's when you want to do your nutrients. You want to do your nutrition. The best time to do your nutrition is when you come home from a workout. Because you traumatize the muscle, this whole inflammatory healing process is kicked in, and now blood is going to be flown to the area to facilitate the healing. You want nutrients in there. You want to be loaded up. And it's not just after you come home from a workout. It's also before, before the workout. You always want to have a steady stream of nutrition in the bloodstream so you can maximize the healing process. If you're trying to maximize this whole or leverage this whole idea of inflammation leading to healing, leading to growth, and you're not healthy, you're not going to get the benefit. You might actually cause more harm than good. It's better off to sit on the couch and eat bonbons and potato chips all day. If you're not going to be nutritionally healthy, and you, then you try to go to the gym or you try to overdo it at the gym. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side, and we will be back with more good health information and your phone calls right after this. Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we have lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a bit. A couple stories here I want to read to you first. This one is from Indiana University based on a study that was published in the uh, Journal of Cardiac Failure. Beetroot juice supplements may help certain heart failure patients. Beetroot juice supplements may help enhance exercise capacity in patients with heart failure, according to a new proof-of-concept study. Exercise, I don't really know what that means, actually. A proof-of-concept study, that's interesting. Exercise capacity is the key factor linked to these patients' quality of life and even survival. You can exercise more when you eat beets, basically, is what they're saying here. And that has to do with something called nitrates. Now, we have all been uh, told that 
<clears throat> excuse me, nitrites and nitrates are really bad for you. You have to stay away from nitrites and nitrites, nitrates and nitrites in foods. And you know what? In a way, that's kind of true. But that refers to preservative, chemical, artificially added nitrates and nitrites. Nitrates and nitrites that are found in vegetables are super, super important for health because they get converted into something called nitric oxide, which not everybody has enough of. Nitric oxide is a really powerful anti-inflammatory, or I'm sorry, powerful blood, um, uh, blood supporter. It helps support blood flow, helps improve blood flow. It allows you to exercise more. It allows you to uh, exercise longer. It allows you to exercise more powerfully. The study that this, uh, this article is referring to is entitled Dietary Nitrate Increases Oxygen and Performance but Does Not Alter Ventilation and Efficiency, Ventilation or Efficiency in Patients with Heart Failure. In other words, get more oxygen to your heart, basically speaking. This isn't just true for people who are dealing with heart disease. Athletes benefit from beets and beetroots, beetroot juice. You, you see beet, now you'll see beet, uh, beetroot and beet powder and beet products all over. Longevity has a product called Cardio Beets. The logic is, is that the nitrates and the nitrites that are in the beets get converted into nitric oxide. We talked about nitric oxide um, oh, a couple years ago. It might be time to talk about, about nitric oxide again sometime soon because it's, it's involved in the inflammatory process. It helps uh, oxygenate tissue, and there's no healing without oxygenation. And lack of oxygenation in tissue is one of the causes of disease, lack of oxygenation to the cells. Nitric oxide is nature's way of assuring that you get enough oxygen to your cells. And drinking beetroot juice can be a great way to get, uh, get your nitric oxide levels up. Beetroot juice also has minerals in it, lots of minerals actually, it's super mineral rich. I think it tastes awesomely delicious, even though a lot of people don't. I don't know how people cannot find it very tasty. It's like almost like sugar. It's so sweet. Anyway, beetroot juice. Actually, it's not just beetroot juice. Uh, celery juice also has high amounts of, uh, 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 of nitrates and nitrates. Celery juice is another, uh, another uh, athlete's secret. Marathon runners and athletes who uh, performance athletes, long distance runners, that kind of thing, uh, people need to use who need a lot of oxygen. Marathon runners especially all know about the importance of celery juice and, and beetroot juice as well because of the, the nitric oxide content. Beets also have uh, and beetroots are beets that are the same thing. Uh, have lots of phosphorus and magnesium and B vitamins and potassium, just super good food. And of course, you'll also get sugar in there too. Um, but you get the fiber with the sugar, so it's not like eating a candy bar. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm going to do one more here, and then we'll get your phone calls. Low-calorie diet enhances intestinal regeneration after injury. This is research or a study that was uh, done at the University of Pennsylvania. Dramatic calorie restriction, that is diets reduced by 40% of normal calorie count, have long been known to extend health span. Where have you heard that before? I cannot say that enough. Calorie restriction is one of the most powerful, all-time inexpensive, in fact, you make money when you restrict your calories, uh, strategies that you can use for longevity and health and wellness and healing, especially if you're dealing with a chronic disease, including cancer, by the way. Low-calorie diet enhances intestinal regeneration after in injury, according to the study. Uh, research has shown that animals fed re or restricted calorie diets are better able to regenerate numerous tissues after injury. After you eat a meal, all your nutritional resources go to digesting and assimilating that food. Those are nutritional resources that could be better off spent building tissue, especially if you're dealing with a wound. It, comes, it boils down to the question of what would you rather be doing, digesting and assimilating your food or building tissue? Well, if you'd rather be digesting and assimilating your food, then go ahead and you know eat as many calories as you want. But if you'd rather be expending your precious nutritional resources, your protein and your B vitamins and your essential fatty acids and your vitamin C, et cetera, magnesium and your zinc on building rather than digesting, then calorie restriction is obviously going to be in your interest. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Keith in... New Jersey. Good morning, Keith. What's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Thank you, Ben. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. What's going on in Jersey? Where are hey. you, by the way? Where are you in Jersey? I what live in Abstekin, which is about 10 miles outside of Atlantic City. 
Oh, okay, I know we are. Is it winter? Is it wintry there, or you got some? Is it no, getting warmer? Temperature's pretty nice. Just a little rainy right now, but weather's Big been deal. good though. Oh, yeah, I used to go to Atlantic City all the time when I was a kid. Uh, okay, but but I understand it's not the same. Yeah, it's definitely changed a lot. They still have gambling. It's still nice, they, though, having to be there. Are the casinos doing well? I, I heard there was there was all these problems down there with the casinos and. Well, they had uh, several of them uh, closed down, so the ones that are remaining are doing pretty. Are doing good. okay. Yeah, does Trump still have one down there? A couple, what's does, that? Donald, does Donald Trump still have one down there? No, nah, no, nah, he got rid of his probably a few years ago. Okay, all right. So what's going on? All right, uh, Ben. My uh, mother, she's ninety years old. About uh, eight weeks ago, she was operated on for an abdominal aneurysm. Okay. It was supposed to have been a two-hour operation, and it turned into a five-hour operation. Oh, my. But her uh, recovery went real good. Okay. About How about old is she? Ago, How old is she? What's that? How old is she? What's that, Ben? How old is she? She's 90 years old. Oh, okay. And then what kind of surgery did they An aneurysm? It was an abdominal aneurysm. Okay, gotcha. And uh, like I said, the operation turned into a five-hour one. It was supposed to have been a <laughs> yeah. two-hour. It's really but, uh, tough. But her recovery to... went... It's tough to do surgery on elderly folks. Yeah, yeah, she's I can a tough old bird, though. She came through pretty good. Good for her. Good for her. So how, how, uh, how? What's the question? How can I help you? Well, about a week ago, she uh, she got a real bad headache, and she had almost like a fainting spell. So she took a Tylenol, the headache went away, etc. And she's been having a few bouts of uh, forgetfulness. So my brother took her to the doctors. And, it could uh, easily be related damn. to the surgery. It could easily be related to the surgery. Could have been. Yeah, that's what I was wondering if it would be related, like to the anesthesia. Since it could be related to that. It could be related to blood was... flow. Blood flow is disrupted to the brain when you go through surgery. It, okay. The blood, the blood starts to slow down and it clots up. It gets thick after surgery because uh, this is one of the body's ways of coping with the, the stress of being cut open to prevent you from bleeding. So thickening of the blood is a natural response. That will keep blood from going to the brain. It's a major stress on the body in a lot of, for a lot of reasons, and it can definitely 100% affect your memory and cognition, uh, especially at the age of 90. Hang on. I'll give you, I'll give you some ideas, uh, things you could do to maybe mitigate some of the damage uh, that might have been caused. Hang on. Keith, don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010. Is our number? We're talking to Keith in New Jersey about a uh, aneurysm. Your mother, uh, your mother-in-law, you said, or grandmother? It was my mother, uh, Ben. Yeah, oh, your mother. She had an aortic or a- abdominal uh, aneurysm. Abdominal. Abdominal aortic. Uh, uh, abdominal aneurysm. I think that's the aorta, actually. An aneurysm is basically uh, uh, did it rupture. Uh, yes, it did. During the okay. operation, it did. Okay, so, oh, during the operation. Uh, an aneurysm yeah. is, is a bulge in the aorta, in the blood vessel, an aortic aneurysm is. Uh, and it could be asymptomatic, and you can have it for a long time. But when it ruptures, that's a big, big problem. So that's probably why she was in surgery for a long... Uh, they, so they did a... Abdo- was she symptomatic with her abdom- with her, with her uh, aneurysm, or they just found it when they were, when they were checking her out? Well, they, they found it when they did a, an exam on her a while back. Back. But she was asymptomatic. Told her that she, pardon me. She was she was without symptoms. She didn't notice. She didn't know she had anything. That's correct. They just happened to find it on one of the exams. See, I hate this work. idea of putting elderly folks like that in surgery for that. And then she obviously, you know, the body's very brittle, and uh, the blood vessels are very brittle at the age of ninety. To go in there and do surgery to do surgical procedures is just asking for problems. The medication of el- the elderly and surgical procedures in the elderly, you know, you got to really think about that. Uh, now, the, once it's ruptured, obviously, it's, it's a big problem, and that can absolutely have caused mental health issues or brain health okay. issues, cognition issues, those kinds of things. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Get her on immediate nutrition. Immediate. Have her sipping on the BTT. Immediately. You'll make a world of difference if she's not supplementing. Chicken soup. Okay. Homemade chicken soup. Bone soup. I mean, there's a ton of things you really want to give her, but at the age of 90, it's tough to do that. You know, to just to, to get her, unless she's really with it and she's really, she's, she's a functional 90 kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's, she's very yeah. functional. I mean, before okay, her get operation, her on some, she was get, like aerobics. Three get, her on, get her on the healthy start pack. Get her on the healthy start okay. pack. 
get her on the whole healthy start pack, uh, double up on the uh, on the ultimate EFAs, and don't give her, don't follow the directions on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Don't give her like a scoop or two scoops all at once. Start off really slow and have her sipping on it all day long. Make okay. sense? And then also uh, chicken soup, homemade chicken soup. That's what I'd be doing. Okay. All right. Okay, you want to throw a couple more things in there? Go get some vitamin E. 400 international units of vitamin E. Uh, that'll do. That'll do a bunch of things for her. And let um, me think. I don't, I'm trying to give you the most bang, biggest bang for your buck. The things you get the biggest bang for your buck for. You know, I just hate to bombard her with stuff. That's a good place for you to start. Maybe zinc 50 milligrams a day. Zinc picolinate 50 milligrams a day. Okay, 50 milligram. Okay, yeah. thanks, and, Ben. Appreciate it. Okay, you bet. Have, have yourself a great day. Can I ask one more question, life. Ben? Yeah, sure. Uh, when, uh, when consuming bone soup, because I do a lot of bone soup, do I need to take uh, digestive enzymes with that? And it always helps to do digestive enzymes with protein. It's not urgent because oh, okay. your food, the protein's liquefied, so it's not like eating a steak or something. But still, it, all, it doesn't hurt ever to take digestive enzymes with your meals. Okay, great. Okay, good deal. All right, deal. thanks a lot, Ben. Appreciate all right, good, it. good to talk to you, Keith. Take care. All right, let's go to Dorium in Virginia. Good morning, Dorium. What's up, buddy? Hello? Do we have Dorium? Let me see. Did I hit the wrong button? Dorium? Dorium, Dorium. All right. I don't know why I don't have Dorium, but we'll put him back on hold and go okay. to John in Arkansas. Hmm. Am I doing something wrong here, John? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, what's up, John? How you doing? <laughs> I'm just fine, Ben. Hey. Uh, oh, John, question. Trucker John. There you are. Hey. Uh, hey. you're, always um, some, you're always someplace else, someplace different. I, I, I don't think I've always. talked to you in Arkansas before. <laughs> Where in Arkansas? I know. Do I sound different in Arkansas? No, you sound the same. I like Arkansas, though. What part of Arkansas are you in? Right now, I'm pretty much just right about in the center of Arkansas. Okay. Uh, right. Maybe just north of Little Rock. All right. Well, I'm not a huge fan of Little Rock, but Hot Springs and... Uh, and then the, there's some little towns in the mountains there where they have the crystal caves oh, and stuff. I live, I live north of Little Rock up by a place called Mountain Home, Is that uh, they have, Arkansas. Just, they have the crystals? The crystals up there? They um, have, no, yeah. not that I know of. Oh, okay. All right. That's, I've, I've been to some really cool crystal caves in northern Arkansas. But go ahead, John. How can I help you, buddy? Well, I just had a question about... Um, Carnivora. Have you ever heard of this product? Oh, yeah. I know. I mean, I Simulate don't know a lot about it. Immune modulation. Uh, you know, you it's know, been around I know. I'll tell me tell you what. I, I don't know a lot about carnivores, so I can't really speak to it. But I do okay. know Ty Bollinger, and he's a great guy, and he's a serious healthcare professional and healer. Uh, I don't think he's officially a healthcare professional, but he's been doing it long enough uh, that he knows a lot of stuff, and he recommends it. So that's one thing. And then... Uh, and then uh, I've heard really a lot of really good things about it. When I did the Truth About Cancer uh, lecture series or, or weekend this past October, there were a lot of people talking about carnivora. And, you know, so I can give you the theory on things, but if people benefit, that's really the bottom line. It's not really the theory. It's not the chemistry. As, as nerdy and as much as I love that stuff, the bottom line is how people feel and how stuff works. And I hear a lot of good things about carnivore. That's all I can really say about it. Although, from a uh, just from a health from a uh, ingredient perspective, I'm not sure exactly what the big deal is with it. There's nothing really dramatic in there. But nonetheless, I have to say, uh, people get benefits from it, and that's really that's the bottom line. So, you know, take that for what it's worth, I guess. You're absolutely right about that. Does that answer uh, your question? You know, I just I just go with the triangle of disease. You know, now that's anymore, kind of how I look at it. That's kind of how I look at it. I just tell people you just got to get all systems online, and slowly things will turn around and reverse. Exactly. Themselves. Exactly, and you want to get that slowly thing. You know, that people don't like the slowly part, but it's like no. when, you're li when you go to the gym and you lift weights, you don't, like, after the first day, you're not Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, you're not, like, a big, huge bodybuilder. It takes time, right? And that's how healing no, has kidding. to be done. Yeah, we have this, I and, and dis fortunately, disease takes place that way, too. Disease is also slow in building. It doesn't happen all of a sudden. So, you know, you, we didn't get into our mess overnight, and it's, it's it, it, naive to think that you can turn the thing completely around instantly. You can begin to turn it around instantly, that's for sure. The, 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 the beginning of the healing process can happen instantaneously. But the whole healing process, you know, 
On the other hand, if you got cancer, I think carnivores, they're, they market it for cancer mostly, although it does have other, they call it an immune modulator. Um, you know, there's, if you have some kind of health challenge, it needs immediate addressing, maybe carnivore might help. It's basically a couple of, some herbs uh, and a few little, a few nutrients. I may be wrong, antioxidant. I, can, I don't really see what the big deal is with it, but people do get results. That's, that's the bottom line. All right, I got. I want to try and get Dorian in, John. Uh, no problem. Try and get one more call. Thanks so much, John. Appreciate no it. Have problem. a great day. Thanks, good man. To, good to talk to you. All right, let's see if we can get Dorian on board. Dorian in Virginia. Good morning. What's up? Hi, Ben. Hello, Dorian. Hi. My mom and my dad both have a nagging cough in recent time. That's not and, good. And um, I don't. They haven't been. Well, my mom hasn't been sleeping very well, so she asked me to find out what she can do. And they're both coughing? Well, my mom more than my dad do. And okay. it only neither happens in the, sm- neither, they in don't the smoke. night more than the day. Well, that would make sense if they have sleep apnea or they have problem. You know, when you sleep, things relax, and that can, that can definitely cause some... If there's something going on in there, that can amplify irritation if, uh, if they're totally relaxed. Um, and they're laying down, especially that post-nasal drip or something like that. Uh, do they sleep? Do they snore? I think they both do, yes. Are they overweight? No, they're not. Oh, are they uh, any issues with blood sugar, any uh, any diabe- diabetes medic- diabetes medication, not, anything like that? No? How old are they? Not that I know of. How old? My mom is 58, and my dad is 60, um, okay. 60 mid-60s. Okay, and they're not on any drugs? No. Well, he's, okay. he's hypertensive, I know. Ah, uh, well, some, some hypertensive drugs, uh, some of them can definitely cause coughing. That's actually a side effect in what they call ACE inhibitor drugs. I don't know if you ever heard of that term. ACE inhibitor drugs are one of their major side effects is chronic cough. But you said your mom's doing it too, right? Yes, my mom. Yeah, so, my mom so, started first, actually. Yeah, no, I, you might want to check out the room, see what, see what they're breathing in. That could have something mm-hmm. to do with it. Uh, yeah. They don't cough during the day? Well, occasionally, but... More Not, than it, yeah, when the I, sun goes down, I, yeah. I would, it sounds like there might be something in the room, or they're having some kind of a, a post-nasal drip situation. But it seems weird there'll be both of them. Uh, if that's the case, if they have, feel like a tickle in their throat and they have to cough, and it might be post-nasal drip, you always want to backtrack that to the digestive system. That's a sign that mm-hmm. the body's reacting to something that's getting in there. But to me, it, the way it sounds, Dorian, it sounds like something that's going on in the room, to be perfectly honest, okay. more than anything else. All right, buddy, I got to motivate. Thank you for your call. Appreciate it. And thank you to everyone for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And a join the team link that you can click on and join the Bright Side Ben team. Love to have you as a member of our team. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start yourself a longevity business and earn thank you checks and all the good stuff associated with having your own business, including writing off your home office and your mileage and your stamps. Click on the Join the Team link. We'd love to have you as a member of the Bright Side Ben team. Thanks for listening to the Bright Side. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 